Because yeah. we move on quick from mass shootings. And it's the top of the story for a day or a half. tragedy day. is just, it's, it's a part of the game. Death and destruction is a part of the game. Like, niggas just... Yeah, and, but it gets very little airtime. And I think the more and more we talk about things, we just get fatigued with the severity of situations so fast and so bad that we really give up on stuff. So we've forgotten. We have a very terrible historical record of just how heinous and how ugly and how wicked COVID was when it was at its peak when we didn't have no answers, when there was no vaccine. Okay, we're going to use nicknames and cover names because we're going to try. We're talking about the Rona, y'all. Yeah, we're going to try to keep this video as unflagged and uncensored and untagged and labeled as possible. As possible, but yeah. We feel like it is necessary as we get into the fall. Fall is coming. To school, exchanging. Finishing vacations, coming out mm -hmm. to travel, doing a whole bunch of stuff. And it's worth, it's worth it to acknowledge that if you look out, the rolling numbers is on the rise, right? Coco is on the move. And there are things that we feel like or felt like it was worth counting out or pointing out or at least talking to y'all about in terms of Coco. So a couple, three things in particular I wanted to point out in terms of this emerging story. Number one, there are apparently two different strains that have emerged. The first is EG.5 or EG.5, also known as the Eris strain, E-R-I-S, -E Eris. And the second strand is the BA.2 that eight six strain, which is known or being called Parola. So we know that those two strands have been moving around. Parola specifically has been seen in five countries. Those countries include South Africa, Denmark, the UK, Israel, and the United States. More specifically, the United States, that strain has been found in Michigan, Virginia, and Ohio. Now, what they're saying is that those are two new strains, but what they've really been seeing is a fluctuation and an increase of the old strain. Right. So things like Omicron is still floating around and affecting people. And it's really turning into a world world where schools are being flooded. Most recently in L.A. County, they have identified what they're calling as a triple demic that they are worried about, which is a combination of cocoa, RSV, which is a respiratory issue and the flu. Right. So they're very concerned that contoxin of those three is what's going to be what overwhelms a lot of the infrastructure, a lot of the systems and has a lot of people down bad. Second thing to call into note. Is today a report was released that says the state of Kentucky has, or I'm sorry, a school district in the state of Kentucky has had to cancel classes for uh, only two weeks in the school because of such high rates of strep throat, Rona, and the flu that have already overtaken that system. Now, I just had a doctor's appointment early this week, and I actually was offered my flu vaccine, which I took because I take flu vaccines. And that's because I work in a classroom. I work with a whole bunch of nasty teenagers who don't wash their booty. We keep it cute. We keep it safe. We do what we can to fight back. And they are worried about the overwhelming capacity or lack thereof that they're going to experience in those classrooms. And this is already what it's looked like two weeks in. The last thing I want to bring up is an article that Plug has pulled up right now that talks about the 21.6%, almost 22.22% increase in hospitalizations that we're seeing nationwide based on what the CDC has reported, right? A lot of concern for right now, they're feeling good about the ability for old tests to be able to be responsive or to be able to catch some of these things. They're motivated by people who are wanting to do the right thing and are self-motivated to self-report and stuff like that. But it's a lot of questions about the infrastructure and capacity that the country is going to have if we continue to see in all parts of the nation these numbers increase, right? That's what's happening in the swell. Now, that being said, well, a lot of people tired. A lot of people don't want to hear that too. I told y'all we had some depressing shit to talk about, y'all. I told y'all. I'm sorry. That's why I like keep the energy. Let's keep it like we still like hip hop. We still feeling that energy. We in that. Don't cry yet. Go ahead, Toy. And, and we did try to warn you as Plug has the article up in the back that's giving us some particularity. Did you have anything specific you wanted to shout out from that video before we move or that post before we move to the video? No, I wanted to do the disclaimer to let the algorithm and to let YouTube know we are mm -hmm. only sharing information that has been validated and verified. We are only displaying information about the coronavirus or what is also known as COVID-19 in a way to inform people, to give people the tools to be able to inform themselves. We are only, we are not healthcare professionals. 
nor are we attempting to display ourselves to be at, to be giving healthcare advice at all. Now, plug get the video ready to pull up because as much as we are not saying we're those things, we already have a certain thing sometimes on this show that we agree with sight. But I get the sentiment that as we go into this new season of Coco, that a lot of people may feel at least to a degree like this individual right here. Go ahead and put this. Let's get it. Alex Jones came out with a video saying that TSA whistleblowers contacted him and told him that they will be bringing back masks and vaccine mandates to airports by October. Now, I know some of you are going to want to say, what? That's Alex Jones. Why are you even reporting this? That man is crazy. That doesn't even sound reasonable. No mainstream media reported this. Oh, except for there's a few things you should consider. Like the fact that TSA and the federal government never wanted to lift the mask mandates to begin with. They only did so because the courts forced them to. Or the fact that businesses and colleges all over the country have started bringing back both masks and vaccine mandates. Or you can consider the fact that the news has been inundated us with COVID after COVID after cases increase, after mask mandates, after why we should bring back this, after we're preparing a new booster shot that as if they are preparing us to get ready for a new set of lockdowns and mandates. You know what I also find interesting? The fact that all this COVID-19 fear mongering is arriving right in time for another election. Fancy that. Not to mention, like Jimmy Dore says here, masking is actually harmful and the science does not actually support bringing back masks even if COVID-19 were to have another outbreak. So are you going to call Alex Jones crazy again, or are we just going to look at all the evidence around us and think for yourselves? All right, now. Real quick, Toy, we got to point this out. We are not advocating a word this, a word this man has said. The chopper does not believe in Alex Jones, nor do yeah. we believe in any of the rhetoric that this individual is pushing. This is for commentary and, anal and analysis purposes only, algorithm, we are not advocating nothing this nigga is on. Go ahead, tell you. If y'all are not familiar with Alex Jones, you will be because if you recall, he was recently litigated and lost litigation, lost lawsuits about him. The crime that Sandy Hook was a lie, that it was a false flag event, and that there were actors who are a part of that tragic event where 20 plus elementary school kids and some teachers were tragically killed. He also is a big believer in QAnon, just big textbook conspiracy theorist. And now, and ironically, if y'all haven't caught our episode about con conspiracy theories from last week, go back and watch the whole, because it was a great conversation that looks at black conspir or conspiracy theories that black people have and which ones we should keep and which ones we should let go of. I definitely think families on the ones that we need to let go of, right? A whole laundry list of here's a larger agenda and look at the elections coming up and look at this, that, the other. But I want to hear from y'all. Is, and Melodious already got to some of this in the comments, so I'm going to read what they said in a second. But do you even care anymore? Like, how, what's the box? I guess on a scale of one to ten. Do we care about COVID? Is that what oh, you mean? Wait, wait. On a scale of one to ten. Yeah. You know, on a scale of one to ten. Do you care about COVID? Conversations about COVID. Social, or even political conversations about COVID. Just on a scale of one to ten, where is your radar at for when COVID news pops up? or what you care to know about, or how you want to move moving into the fall and the spring. Scale of 1 to 10, where are you at with COVID? Do you care? Honestly, how I feel about it is, I care in so much as... I need a it, I, on a scale from 1 to 10? Yeah. I guess I, I care like a... 6, 7. Because this is the thing. I feel like if it's handled responsibly, we don't need to care like a 10. You feel me? If we treat it like we treat the flu. If we treat it like... Because if you got the flu, stay your ass at home. If you got the flu, wash your hands. Wear a mask. If you got any... Like the rotavirus, you know what I'm saying? Like any of that. Like my my, my two-year-old just had a little stomach bug. And I'm hand sanitizered up. You feel me? So it's, if we look at it responsibly, like we know what the coronavirus could produce, you feel me? Then, yeah, it, like I think we, we should be straight. I, the problem comes in, though, is that you got videos like old oh, buddy going on these long tangents about what Alex Jones is saying about how masks are deadly and bro, where is the data that showed that masks was killing people? Oh wait, the people that's in control don't want that data to come out. That's what I'm right. saying. Anytime you have the basis of your argument is questioning 
and calling into question or doubting some larger structure. We can't do nothing with it. Even if you on some real shit, we can't do nothing with it. So I feel like it's a seven, six, seven right now. Because we know what we know what long form COVID does. You got people that still dealing with COVID. You feel me? And but we also know that it's a uh, it's a you know what I'm saying it's a wild card. Like you don't know how you're gonna be impacted. So be better safe than sorry. So I'd rather be a seven and be and you know what I'm saying and, and be able to curtail the shit than be on some bullshit and six months later niggas got to be on a ten. Exactly. So that's how I look at it. I'm gonna say seven too. I feel like. I feel like we are too, in, in the ways that we often are, as I think in American society, probably more so than either other nation, because yeah. we move on quick from mass shooting. Blah, 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 blah. And it's the talk of the story for a day or a half. A tragedy day. is just, it's, it's a part of the game. Death and destruction is a part of the game. Like, niggas just... Yeah, and, but it gets very little airtime, and I think the more and more we talk about things, we just get fatigued with the severity of situations so fast. And so bad that we really give up on stuff. So we've forgotten. We have a very terrible historical record of just how heinous and how ugly and how wicked COVID was when it was at its peak when we didn't have no answers, when there wasn't no vaccine, when we they was trying to, was it 12 feet or 6 feet? Or can you go or can't? You know what I'm saying? It was bad. People was dying fast. You know what I'm right. saying? And COVID is still very much killing people, not to the same extent, but people are still dying. COVID, from what I understand, it has not changed. It's still the third leading cause of death in this country. You know what I'm saying? So, bro, like, you worried about... But we adapt to that type of shit often, though. Like, we, like, shit, hey, hey, this thing is killing y'all more than anything else. And we be like, damn, it is? But that's what's wild, and that's why I take it as a seven, because it still has wreaked havoc on so many people and so many lives. And like you said, with long COVID, it's still lasting. And we don't know what the effects of that long COVID COVID is going to be. So to take your foot off the gas and not really care when you have information that you can do something with, it's just so careless to me because it's just so many compounding factors and things that we aren't really certain about. You know what I'm saying? So I'm taking it serious because I will be pissed off if something happened to my mama. That being said, then I want to ask now about the shutdown. So we know we got some heightened interest based on what y'all said. How do y'all feel about the potential of another shutdown? I know Melodious is talking about it. Now we're going to go to this comment. Plug, read Melodious' comment on the likelihood of shutdown, shutdown, because I think that's important to consider too. I think the current climate in the U.S., environmental and political, would not support another lockdown. Another lockdown. Too many politicians are willing to create chaos. Andrea said eight as well. I think that, I, but I, I, and this is what I was saying, I would have to agree with Melodious in this instance. But uh, on both sides, though, I don't even think more one said eight as well. I think yeah. that was because we are in an election season. I think both. Democrat, Republican alike don't want no shutdown. It's radioactive, man. Yeah. yeah. That, that, those words together is toxic right. for anybody trying to remember I'm, something. And one thing that we definitely recognize during the election season anyway, policy is at the bottom of what people is discussing and they more so trying to figure out what do I need to say, especially at this point in an election cycle, what do I need to say to, to tap into my base? And... I, that's like you said, it's toxic to even say, hey, y'all got y'all can't go back to work, whatever. The amount of businesses that were shut down, you feel me? Like the people not working, like people not wanting to not work type shit, you feel me? As well as fears associated with what's going on with Wall Street and the market already, another shutdown would be like disastrous. Yeah, and, and then so, I mean, too, we couldn't get on the same foot about how valuable certain workers were over other workers. So I'm sure people at this point gonna right. have something to say about, you know what I'm saying? But let me ask the question in an ideal world, would you want another shutdown? In an ideal world, COVID get bad. We know what we know what they're not gonna do, right? We've established that. I'm anti capitalist. I think that it's the nature of capitalism that tells us to endure and die, you know what I'm saying? To keep businesses open, to make sure profit is still moving, you feel me? So I feel like, yeah, like from an anti-capitalist standpoint, like bit like businesses, like we can rebuild that shit. Like with all this shit can get, you know what I'm saying, put back up. We print money. All this yeah. shit is artificial in the first place. We give this shit value. So shit. Like like life, you can't put no you can't put no price tag on that. But what they displaying is their willingness to. You know yeah. what I mean? So I'm gonna say yes in an ideal world, but for a different reason than you. I'm a separatist. Y'all be over there, I'm over here. We can have class online. We already on the chop online for the chop up show. I just come over here and just talk to y'all. No problem. Y'all yeah. probably talk to y'all even more if I was able to just be at the crib with it. She's a On separate. top of the fact, you silly. Hey, the <laughs> routine making was so much easier back then. I really do cherish that time during the lockdown. The world was cleaner. 
the sky was blue or the, the birds was chirping loud. Bro, it wasn't no travel. I was able to make it out to Orange County from Long Beach. I was able to make it to Orange County in less than an hour. Hey, okay, last question about this before we move. Because, yeah, more one, they do really do be acting like money is a limited resource out here. It's not that deep. Shout out to Melodious for pointing out, too, that the hesitancy that they have for lockdowns is scary because it does make you wonder, like, how bad do we really got to get for y'all to... <laughs> yeah, it really be... How many people... Because like, when you say how bad it got to get, the question is how many people got to die before I mean, we're willing to shut it down. Yeah. The answer was more than the last time. And last time, it was a hell of a lot of people. You know what I'm saying? So that's what's crazy. 